so here we are we're uh, building the barrel back part of the barrel back which is on the transom this is the bit here that I'm starting with um, and this bows out by four and a quarter which is 108 millimeters and that's it on the plan view and this gives it the nice curve so although you've got the round barrel back it will come out as well and it will curve out and then this will be um, covered in the plywood I would imagine three layers again of the uh, the three mil stuff which I've got over there um, and then the top one will be in the mahogany so uh, 108 millimeters and of course what have I got here I've ordered 100 mil Douglas fir so for eight millimeters which is that mark there I could either have gone and bought 120 strips of wood or I thought well, I could just glue some of my spare um, Douglas fir on here because by the time you get that curve I'm going to be using literally that much amount of wood and this is not a structural member this is really uh, this is what uh, is the curve on the back of the boat is all about so it's kind of an aesthetic piece of wood so it's not structural so last night I uh, glued these two pieces of wood on and then I was kind of wondering how do I get this curve um, how am I going to do it and I was thinking of a big radius and then maybe having a pencil line and then drawing it but I don't know what the radius is um, and then I thought, oh, stupid, why don't you use a piece of wood? And what I'll do is I'll bend that, use some uh, nails, and then I'll just create a nice curve for this piece of wood, and I'll um, try to replicate it. That's going to be... Um, I, well, I suppose once I get the, uh, the two pieces of wood together, once I've cut the curve out on the... Um, the bandsaw, you can see I've marked the centre lines there, we should have the same curve so I can plane them down together um, to make sure I've got a consistent curve because I've got to do one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of wood like this and then these pieces of wood will be cut off at the corners so hence that they are a bit thicker at the edges. So that's what I'm going to be doing the next couple of days. Um, there's a lot of wastage of wood which I can't really avoid but um, Hey, that's what it requires and then I can stick them on the back of this but I can't um, glue them on I can only put them in pencil uh, in screws at the moment because when I come to fit the longitudinals they've got to be cut through this um, this piece of wood and the transom itself all the way up here so I um, it's easier to do that without these pieces of wood on because then I can just cut them. But the, the plans and the instructions recommend you do that when this is all mounted in the jig because then you've got the exact angle um, of the longitudinals to fit in there which is going to be quite necessary to, uh, to make sure I get it right because I want them to fit snugly. Um, the other thing I've done is to uh, cover the back of my stem and there's my breast hook and with um, some mahogany and then experimenting as I said with the uh, the tack wise and that, um, that worked out really well um, a piece of uh, spare wood there which I just cut on the uh, bench saw and then used half inch tacks and then just uh, nailed them through it was uh, like this it was uh, there it's, it's a powerful old machine uh, in fact let's turn that off and then that gives me a nice line down here so I'll remove these and then I've just got to trim up the edges uh, with a bit of sandpaper maybe a plane and then uh, I'll probably epoxy it first and then put some uh, yacht varnish on and then bring that up and then hopefully that will come up and see what that's going to look like which uh, will be the same as on the decking and stuff um, which would be strips similar to that and then we'll put either white filler uh, or probably get some um, white birch strips of birch to inlay between them um, but that's going to be way in the future but that would be really one of the most exciting parts of fitting this boat so that's the day's work so this is a, a very little interesting little tool that uh, I bought I put it into Google for a, a staple remover and this is what you get and it's got a little tooth on the front there and you hook that underneath and when you rotate that, that closes that tooth there and it grips the um, the staple like this if you work it underneath and then you just pull it and it will pull it up. 
Should do better than that. I suppose, and then, yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. I wanted to pull the whole thing. I'll have to just get a screwdriver and hook that one up. Let's see if we can get any better. There you go. And the reason this is good is that if I take a piece of sandpaper and just sand that tight, you can see that the holes fill in and pretty much it's a um, perfect bit of wood without any uh, holes, staples or anything in there. And the reason I need that is that the whole of this bottom of this boat is cold moulded in this stuff, 3mm ply, three layers of it to, because it's got the single curves at the front of the bow, when in fact it would be off this stem here. Um, and to hold that obviously in place you need this and so I've experimented with these little blocks of wood and put the half inch staple, fire that in there and that holds that nicely, remove them with this tool, sand it and there you go, you've got a perfect surface then in which to violish. So I'll get on with removing the rest of these, cleaning this bit of wood up and then we'll see what it looks like um, when it's varnished. So here we are on the barrel back um, on these pieces of wood this bit here at the bottom is what I'm working on to get that curve and to try to replicate it on both sides. So I genuinely formed the curved and then drew the line. So then This is where we are today. Still doing the uh, the rear transom. Um, made a bit of a, a bit of a cock up here, um, and it came about because I thought I'd cut a piece of plywood on top of my um, cut pieces here and stick it around and see if it made a fair curve. And it didn't. There was quite a big gap at the uh, at the top here. And when I looked at it, it it was fairly flat along there. Even my dimensions made it flat. And there was a lot more wood here and then it bowed in there which wasn't good because eventually this has got to be covered with plywood and i want it to be a fair curve so i had to go and scratch my head to find out how do you make a fair curve on that and um and what i did was using this i uh put a center line i know it's four and a quarter inches or 108 mil and put a nail in there some couple of nails there and then i put my piece of plywood across such and there is a fair curve. And um, I was able to draw that on that piece of plywood, with this piece of plywood, and then cut it out. And I find that if you take a bit more time with the, uh, the belt sander there, not the belt, the, uh, the, the uh, cutter, um, you can actually split the line with the, uh, with the cutting saw. And it, you can make it a, a great curve, which really needs the minimal of sanding. So, I was able to put that on my piece of wood and of course there was a lot more wood to cut out and by marking that out and putting it through the bandsaw, sorry, um, and just taking your time just to split the line, you actually end up with very little planing and stuff to go on um, to get that fair curve. So I've made the extra two, this is the, uh, the last one, because I need five of these, so I've marked the curve out on there. As you see I've still stuck that piece of wood on the top because I need about eight millimetres of um, extra wood there without having to buy it and with that that should be four and a quarter inches which is bang on 108 millimeters so I'm pretty happy with that so I've just got to cut that one out and now if I put my thing on there it's brilliant if I shine that up there I mean I can see just the tiniest bit of light about I don't know half a millimeter at the top there I'll try and sand that and get that a bit more perfect, but half a millimetre, I mean, no one's going to be bothered about that, I don't think. Um, so I've done that with the other three that I've got, and I have got them here. Um, these two are, need a bit more sanding just to finish that off. You can see some of the blade striations, but again, when I put my plywood on it, it's, um, it's a pretty good curve. Um, this one I've yet to uh, plane down, and... Uh, that's still a bit high in the middle, but that will be that in position. There'll be two pieces here and there'll be two more across the top here. So I've got to then cut here 
and the problem is is that this angle is at 12 degrees so I've got to continue that because eventually the side plywood from the boat will lap onto this and it's got to meet there and of course this will be plywood at the rear this will form the, the barrel back transom so I've got to figure out how to cut that and also at 12 degrees but then I've got to make these fillets out of this wood and that's got to be at a strange angle it's going to be rounded there and then it's going to be smooth to this and 12 degrees to that wow i mean you look at these on the finished boats and you see these fillets you just don't realize the amount of work that has gone into that um the amount of hours so far just to get this far but you know come down and do a couple of hours each day and um maybe sometimes more so an ongoing um, subject is the epoxy and the varnish. What have I learnt about epoxy? Because I've had no dealings with it at all. It's a really good glue, there's no doubt. Um, you don't need much clamping pressure, you just squidge it out, light pressure, and it sets um, to gel within about half an hour, and then another hour or so it goes hard. 24 hours, you're good. And I think before you start varnishing it, you're supposed to leave it even more. But, um, I've done a couple of pieces of test wood, um, plywood, to, um, to actually see what it does out in the sunshine, um, because I've really no experience of what this stuff is like. And so I've cut some bits of wood, and this is the, uh, this is the actual decking plywood. It's three millimeter marine ply, and there you can see I've done epoxy one coat and this is uh, Epiphanes varnish. I've bought two varnishes, Epiphanes which is the really expensive highly recommended one and I just got some Ronsil um, cheap stuff from B&Q. Um, this was done in the cold and you can see that the high humidity got into the epoxy and it started doing that. The varnish has pretty much sealed it in place there um, so that's not good don't do it in the cold weather. Here we go um, Look at this. This is just bare epoxy, and this is how it goes, just sitting outside here for a couple of weeks. Um, and this is Epiphanes on the top, which is supposed to have a UV uh, filter in it, but it hasn't UV filtered. That epoxy is very sensitive to light, there's no doubt. So that's not good. Um, and this one here, I've done two coats of epoxy over all of it. I've done Epiphanes here and Ronsil here to try to um, see which one was better and you can see Bronzeville doesn't do any good at all. That's the cheap varnish. The Epiphanes slightly better but still rubbish. So what I did was just to do this which was um, to put Epiphanes and Ronsil on the plywood without any epoxy. Now I don't know if you can see there's a bit of a reflection going on there. The Ronsil is very red. The Epiphanes is much more golden and it's brought out the uh, the wood the grains in the wood layers here much much better um, there comes a bit of sun so I don't know if I'll move the camera around and try to but Epiphanes has it by a country mile I would say so then I thought boys you idiot you've got to start reading up on this so I got myself um, the booklet from um, West Systems and uh, to see what was available and it, of course it says um, all sorts of interesting stuff about don't do it in the cold where you get this effect and it has no UV properties but they do have a special coating hardener uh, which is about three times the price um, and it's uh, three to one rather than five to one um, five to one as in resin to hardener and this stuff is three to one um, so I bought some of that and here we go this is my latest and most successful this is epoxy with the special hardener brings out the wood the grain beautifully excuse the bits in it I've not been too worried about doing it in a sterile uh, place it's getting dust and whatever you in it and this one is two coats of epoxy oh it's still wet sorry and this is two coats of epiphanes on top and that just brings out the deep luster of that uh, wood even more. That is, uh, that's looking good. It's only been here um, a short while, because we can tell because I um, wanted to bring it out in the sun to let it dry. 
Um, I'm hoping this is going to be the answer. If not, then it's this. It's varnish on the wood but there must be other I'm gonna to have to get some more experimentations I don't know if anybody has any um, knowledge of this as which one is the best because to sand that back to wood um, if that went cloudy I mean it is uh, you know the epoxy is really quite hard and um, if you had to sand that back to wood to redo it it would be a nightmare uh, mainly because, I don't know if you can see, this is 3mm um, marine ply and that facing is 1mm thick. So you only have to go through that wood 1mm and then you're down into the, uh, the ply below, which of course on a deck you would see instantly, which means you then got to redo the deck, which is rubbish. Can't do any of that. Um, so I've got to get this right, hence while I've got the time here, I'm doing this experiment and uh, we'll come back and see how this is doing later. This is the <coughs> the stuff I'm talking about up there. This is obviously my epoxy resin. I bought this stuff, the fast and the slow hardener, um, and I can barely tell the difference. Um, I suppose when you read, it says 25 to 30 minutes of working time, uh, which is probably about right. And then it takes quite a while to go off. It goes into gel first, then it hardens, and then it, uh, I mean, it forms an amine blush, it's called which is um, a greasy substance on the surface, which you can just wipe off with water or sand. But this is the stuff that um, has changed everything, this special coating hardener. Um, and with that, that appears to have a UV filter in it, uh, which along with the epiphanes seems to be giving me the uh, finish I want. Anyway, I'll leave it up there and um, we'll see over the coming months when the sun gets stronger, um, see what happens and if it clouds up or not. Whew. Well, there's my last pieces, three pieces to be cut, and I'm very pleased with them. Um, I smoothed these off with my sander, and I'm really pleased. You can tell these are at 90 degrees because the scarfing of the wood there is at 90. So these match up pretty well, and they're all now nice, fared, beautifully fared curves. So that's <laughs> part of the way. You can now see the 12 degrees cut that comes in and I've got to cut those in at 12 degrees and that can only be surely a lot of planing all the way around this edge to get that curve that way and sloping in that way. God, they don't tell you about this, do they? When you come to buy the plans and build a barrel back. Um, these two are going to be relatively easy. There's just a short amount to cut off there. Nothing on the bottom there and uh, I've just got to fit the two pieces of wood in here to support the plywood that will cover this. I'm going to have to get on now and uh, figure out how the hell to start cutting these and shaping them. Back later. Degrees. And this is what I've come up with. So what I did is I put a piece of wood here and I just marked it under there to follow the curve. And then I put a line on there to show that the curve went in that way. And then I found, look at this, I can angle my bandsaw here at bang on 12 degrees. So I just cut this test piece of wood and I put it in there and cut it round and that's what I ended up with. Just followed that line and it worked a treat I think because I put the center line on there, mark the center line up there, and sorry, I moved this piece of wood here a little bit. A little bit jittery. There it is. So I've got my center line there, and this there. So that's exactly where I want it. And this piece, look at that, 12 degrees, and follows the line. So if I cut just a millimetre over and then I can plane and sand this down, that is going to save me a shitload of work. 
in planing. And all on that clever bandsaw. Thank you, Lumberjack. That's, um, that's brilliant. So, um, what I have to do is to put this upside down on that flat plate and I can't keep that level because it's on a curve. So what I've done is I got some of the old wood that I have cut off here. Actually, I'll put it in the bin. Um, and this is the piece stuck on the top. So I've just cut on these uh, bands, uh, circular saw there, the uh, another piece which I'm gluing on. And that will give me then the flat bottom on which I can now turn upside down. And then that will follow the bandsaw um, around those two corners. And flushed with that success, I think I might just give that a go. I'm going to have some lunch. I'm going to let that glue dry. Um, for a couple of hours. That's um, that's the Gorilla Glue. Really good stuff. And um, it's looking good. I mean, I'm really pleased with these curves. This will obviously all be waste, so that, uh, that doesn't matter. That'll come off. And um, that's obviously a little bit low because it hasn't got the sticky bit on the top, but that has. So, here we are. I've bitten the bullet and I put my first piece of wood onto... My bandsaw with the deck angled at 12 degrees, I marked the lines to get it there. They were going the right way. Uh, it was not easy. I put the fillet on top here, glued it last night, but look at it. It's just slipped under the uh, compression of one of the um, things there that, uh, and it's just slipped out and left a gap. Not the end of the world because I can always, that will fill with epoxy. Um, but the it's about right. And anyway, there's the first piece. I'm dead chuffed with that because that's just saved me a whole load of um, sanding and planing. Um, what I've done is I cut it uh, on the bandsaw about one or two millimetres proud as you can see around the bottom there so that I've got to shave this back to get that flush with the, uh, the back end of the transom. But uh, as you can see, that's looking pretty good. Um, I've marked these two bits out now so I've got to... Uh, to do that. I'm not quite sure I'm going to cut this because I don't have the original um, bits that I cut off here because I need to turn them upside down um, to get it to cut because the the um, the base there only uh, tilts one way not the other so I might just have to cut these with a saw roughly and do a bit more planing but that's not the end of the world um, because that's um, just a small bit of wood but um, that's progressing. I've got the curves kind of right. I'm very pleased with the way that they have gone. They were not so easy. This is kind of replicating that, but uh, I'm chopping off an awful lot of wood here. Um, so if anybody was ever doing this again, uh, my advice would be not to cut the curve on these pieces of wood um, because that has to sit upside down on the, uh, the bandsaw, but to do this bit first. And then once you've got that, then put this in and cut these out that would be a lot easier that way and then you don't have to mess around um, and then you can cut these two pieces as well on the bandsaw so a few cock ups along the way but um, nothing horrendous so I finished cutting the, um, the shape piece of the transom I uh, wasn't too sure so I've cut them plenty wide enough and I'll just have to sand those back um, but that gives me a good lip under the edge there, all the way round there to fair that back. I've marked the centre lines there, and then I had a line centre line down here, just to check that they were far enough back, and this was all parallel, so that these gaps are all the same. And then finally, uh, just to check that they were all fared, that you could put your lump of wood there, and they were all the uh, the same, which is working out pretty well. So I've just glued these uh, with a bit of epoxy and then I shall attach these so that I can stand the transom up and then I can fare this down um, to my uh, chosen 12 degrees. Um, and then I've just got to put the distance pieces in there and then I've got to start making these bits, uh, these fillets in the end here. But I'm, I've got all these bits of wood here, you know, look, look shaped, ready to, to rock and roll here. And I'm sure that I could cut some of these I mean, I've got this piece over here, um, an offcut. I'm sure I can do something without wasting any more wood to reuse them. So uh, that's going to take me a little while, I think. That looks quite a complicated section 
because again I've got an angle and I've got the curves oh dear I'll figure out a way just and lastly started putting some of the uh, the infills in and I've glued these together uh, still a little bit tacky um, and just attached them for the moment to the transom um, so while I was doing that I decided to do the, the fillets Jesus that's just taking me all afternoon um, and all this planing down here because you start off with um, 25 40 45 mil wood cut them in uh, here to fit and then of course you just we well, have to plane it off because it starts there at virtually nothing and as you see it starts coming up and up and up and that's what I've done there with um, both those pieces of wood so I'm pretty pleased with that the joins are pretty good and um, this of course is too um, too thin here this is uh, must be 55 60 up here because this is just descending so I've had to add a little piece in there just to, uh, to glue that and then I can fare that off tomorrow because then that will just allow the plywood to sit nicely on here but I've got a nice line here, it takes quite a long time, a lot more elbow grease than you would uh, imagine to, um, to get it done, but it's, um, that's what's required. So half of them done today, and then I'll do those tomorrow, which will be good, then I actually can get on and fair the top parts when the epoxy's dry, and then we'll be getting pretty near finished, the transom.